Welcome to Connecting the Commonwealth. I am Brian Ramsey and along with Eric Douglas and we have Tom Crimmins and Amanda Berry. They're from FriendNet. We'll introduce those, uh, those guys in just a minute. But just to kind of uh, give you a little background on Connecting the Commonwealth if you're just now tuning in, um, we really like to focus on small businesses, what we kind of told you guys we would do. So it's not every day that small businesses get the opportunity to express what you do and um, uh, in, a, in a public forum. So that's really what the purpose of uh, this podcast is all about, is just to get to know different small businesses around town and maybe something they talk, uh, talk about applies to you or your business. Uh, or you may find that you want to be a franchisee, which is what we're getting ready to talk about. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to uh, uh, and make sure if you want to check out the podcast, we do them every week. So make sure you go back and look at the old podcast and make sure that you like and subscribe, and subscribe which I never remember to, to say that. But uh, make sure you subscribe so you see any future content we put out on Connecting the Column. So with that being said, thank you guys for showing up. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Nice to so, be here. Th- yeah, so this is pretty cool. So we actually share office space. That's mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. one reason why we said, "Hey, you guys want to jump in?" Here? <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, so one of the cool things that uh, you guys do with FriendNet is what? Well, uh, you want to talk about small business, and that's our yeah. whole life. So mm-hmm. it's a franchise. That's what we do. We put people into business. Yeah. Uh, I often describe what we do as being franchise matchmakers. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and we can work with anybody that wants to get into business or get into another business. But our most typical client is somebody who has probably been working in a job, uh, trading time for money, and right. says, uh, "Hey, I don't think I want to do that anymore. I really like to have my own business, but I don't know what I want to do." Mm-hmm. And that's yep. where we step in and help them through a process of uh, figuring out what would be the the kind of business that's the best fit for you. Yeah, it's funny, you know, as we were sort of prepping, uh, as prepping for the show, we had a call to say, hey, what is it you guys want to talk about? But the interesting thing I was telling you guys was, we often deal with a lot of clients that are separated from their corporate life. Mm-hmm. And instead of jumping, because you know, they're kind of, I wouldn't say, uh, oh, they just don't want to go back into corporate life right off the bat, right? So they're like, hey, what do I want to do? And the first thing is, I'm gonna go buy a franchise. <laughs> um, I didn't really know you guys uh, back then when all that happened, but uh, that, that seems to be a path is, Let's immediately look for, you know, uh, something I can do my own, be a small business owner, and a franchise is a great way to do it, right? Yeah, and I think a lot of people coming out of a corporate job, you know, they're they're tired of some of the the aspects of working for somebody else, like having to run things the way somebody else wants them run, and sometimes having to do things that they weren't wouldn't necessarily be the way they do it. So they want to get rid of that, but they also they they like a little bit of structure around them, and a franchise provides that, you know, because you're uh, one of the sayings about franchising, you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. Right. So that support group is already out there for you. Well, I would imagine you get a little bit of a blueprint too, coming from, you know, yeah, for sure. So you're not completely out on your own. Right. You're not starting with a blank sheet of paper and writing a business plan. So Amanda, here's a question. Sure. We get this, we get this uh, quite a bit. Um, we run into small business owners that maybe they work for an uh, HVAC company, for, as, a, as an example, right? They're a great electrician or uh, HVAC guy or whatever it is, and they're great at doing the job, may not necessarily be a great leader or a business owner. So how do you guys, when somebody says that, hey, I want to I own my own business, how do you guys go through the process of sort of walking them through whether they're actually going to be a good bit because not not everybody is a good business owner there are worker bees and then there's sort of leaders if you will how, how do you walk through that process yeah that's a that's a really really good point it's a good question so to tom's point we kind of like to talk about FranNet as like the eHarmony or the match.com right yep. of the business world do you swipe and, right or left right do you swipe right or left <laughs> yeah this franchise uh, that's, what I'm doing, right? that's pretty cool and a big part of that is figuring out what is it that you would be doing as a business owner. There is a big difference between what the business does for a customer and what the owner will be doing every day in that business to make it successful. And what is the yeah. skill set that you have? Um, and the interesting thing, a lot of the clients we work with, it oftentimes they really don't understand what their skill set is. They're just really good at something, right. right? And if you're really good at something, you often don't even know that that is a legitimate skill set. You just, oh, well, I'm good at it. Everybody must be good at it. Yeah, That's sure. not the case. Right. Uh, so part of our process is to really sit down with our clients 
um, put them through an actual assessment to figure yep. out personality, skill set, yep. learning style, what type of business are you a best fit for, building out a business model, and then using that as a template to actually look at businesses that way. If you start out with what the business does and try to back your way into it, that's a really good way to fail. How many restaurants have you gone to where the cook can make a great steak, right. but they don't, they're not exactly. great at running the business and they're, and they're exactly. gone in a year? Exactly. We want to avoid that as much as possible. And part of our services are free, by the way. This is, you do not pay us for the service. It, it's, it's about making sure that you have the education, that you have the skill set necessary, and then what type of business fits that skill set. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big, big part of what we do. Yeah, so here's a, here's a uh, so you bring up a good, an interesting point. The reason I ask you that is um, uh, we also have a financial planning practice, mm -hmm. and I got into business the exact same way that you're describing. Yeah. I actually was peddling cell phones, believe it or not. That's a long story. <laughs> that's, a whole, that's a whole other podcast. Um, but I was. I was, uh, I was in the wireless business and spent almost 11 years doing it. And I was like, what in the world do I want to do? I knew it wasn't peddling cell phones the rest of my life, mm -hmm. but I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Ironically enough, I thought I wanted to be an HR manager. It is such a blessing that I didn't do that. Yes, good choice. Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, now now we all offended all the HR people <laughs> in the audience. But, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's I'm, just a not, I'm a recovering HR. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's just not my, it's not my skill set. But that's what I thought I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I actually went to an agency here in town and we did, everybody's done like a Myers Briggs. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And so we, I went through 19 of these evaluations over the course of about six months. And at the end of it, it was sort of a career assessment type thing, mm -hmm. kind of like what you're talking about. And at the very end, it was like, here's the top four industries that you should pursue. And you're supposed to get a top five. And I literally had one and nothing else was even close. <laughs> and uh, she was like, well, you need to you know, get in financial services. And I'm like, okay. So I just started calling around asking buddies and uh, I've been doing it ever since. So it, it's not that I wanted to do that or whatever. I just had the right evaluations done. And it pointed me in a direction that I'm, I love what I do, and I'm, I'm fairly decent at it. So uh, kind of the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. If you're a small business owner or you want to be a small business owner and you think that's really what you want to do, you know, come see these guys and say, hey, uh, I don't know what I want to do, but I think I want to be in business for myself. But you would help them evaluate, A, can you be a business mm -hmm. owner, right? And then what might be the best franchise for you uh, to pick from? Is that kind of how it works? Right. Yeah. And then what? And so after, let's say, I want to be a, I, I need to be a pizza uh, franchising, whatever. I'm assuming then you guys go out and uh, and t or do you? Would you? Do you guys negotiate that contract, or you have somebody else do that? Well, we're actually a franchise, yeah. so we're. It's not just Amanda and me. Yeah, it's uh, over 100 of us all across North right. America. So our franchisor researches and qualifies franchises yep. before we work with them okay Got so it. we have a portfolio of perfect companies to choose from so you're not so. you're not just letting them loose saying oh yeah you need to be a franchisee and just no. let them loose and go okay no, yes yeah, so no, that's no. that's there's right. over what four thousand i think last time we checked franchises yeah, cool. available not all of them are good yeah um really need to know how to evaluate how effective and especially now right it's right. an interesting time to be getting into business sure Let's make sure the person you're getting into business with actually knows what they're doing i was going to ask yeah. you yeah. this <laughs> process for maybe some franchisors that you don't recommend or don't even work with perhaps absolutely right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and and it's um, yeah, it, it that's that's a, a a good way to think about it. Yeah, yeah. cool. I'm pretty good. Yeah, yeah, good. So you're a franchisee yourself. How did you end up getting into this into this business? Um, I, actually, my story was I was a client and bought a franchise and I was running it and also had time to uh, start doing something else. So the guy that was my uh, franchise friend and consultant years ago wanted somebody here in Louisville and I said well I'll, I'll do that and actually that's become my mainstay now she's got another, a different <laughs> interesting story about because she's the franchisee now I work for her okay, okay. Well, let's, yeah. let's lose that very loosely works for me yeah I mean, clearly he's the expert yeah um so similar story I started as a client you see pattern here yeah. I started as a client um I was kind of the opposite. I was not in a corporate job at all. I was actually with the government. So 10 years with uh, federal service and I decided to want to own my own business. Sure. Um, had no idea what I wanted to do or how to do it. Someone recommended I go see Tom. 
Of course, the first thing I thought it was, no thank you, I do not want to own a fast food restaurant. <laughs> I did not realize how many franchises are out there that have nothing to do with food, which I was very happy about. Uh -huh. um, came and saw Tom and uh, went through his process, looked at, took the assessment, built the business model. I looked at four or five different businesses. Um, and by the end of it, I just really liked what he did. Because um, I had done a lot of that in my federal government job. I, I did a lot of employee development and, and training and um, career projections. And that's kind of what we do with our clients now. It's, it's okay, well, what's the next step in your life and, and how can we help you with that? Um, and is this a good fit? It's not always a good fit and figure that out now. Um, right. and Tom helped me with that and I uh, loved what he did and so I bought him out and yeah, I turned around and was like, you said you wanted to continue to do this, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so we wrote that in the contract. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So here's a, uh, here's a question. So we have a lot of clients, like I said, that sort of get out of the corporate world and want to, you know, get involved in a small business. Mm -hmm. Franchise. Not for everybody, right? Not for everyone. Yeah, not for everybody. I mean, it's... You can say that about any business, but let's just say franchising because that's what you guys do. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the misconceptions or misunderstandings that you guys see when a client comes to you and says, here's what I know about franchising? And you go, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. Maybe roll us through some of, uh, some of the misunderstandings or misconceptions about franchising. Well, we've touched on a big one already, and that is what we call separating the function of the business mm -hmm. from the function of the owner. Yeah. Um, and and you you let off at your example of the HVAC person right. is, is kind of an example I might use with a client to say, hey, just because you're good at the work, you know, typically as a franchise owner, it's it's very rare that the franchisor has built a model around the owner doing the labor. Right. Okay. Whatever that labor might be. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and and that has a couple of negative effects. One, it it uh, usually when people look at a fran if they look at franchises and you can go online, there's portals that list them and sure. you can wear yourself out looking at the over three thousand or so that are out there. <laughs> um, but uh, they're all organized by industry type. So mm -hmm. Uh, oil change business, uh, maid service, pizza place, those mm -hmm. kind of things. Yeah. So uh, people are drawn to the product, and they don't even realize it, but uh, it, we, what, what that's seeing them organized that way, we start to think about, well, what, it, it, what's the product? And they pick something because they like the product, and they don't think at all about what the owner does. Mm -hmm. And like Amanda was saying, that's, that's the critical thing. Uh, and it often has very little to do with uh, the product. Right. You know? It's more day-to-day -day running a business. Yeah, yeah. Managing employees. I mean, one of our extreme examples, I call it one of our ugly baby businesses. Right. Uh, we've done, um, we've worked with several of the janitorial franchises. Okay. And, um, you know, I recently placed a fellow that was a uh, division VP or president of, of, of a very large company in that kind of business and I know when Doug walks through the door he does probably the last thing on his mind but <laughs> he wants a business that can't be uh, interrupted by Jeff Bezos mm -hmm. uh, that uh, there's plenty of market out there so almost every building is going to need some kind of janitorial uh -huh. work your customer is a repeat customer Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not. You don't just go clean the office once. You're doing it. Knowing you do a good job, you keep. Yeah, sure. They get dirty again. The yeah. builds a residual income. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, a, a guy like him then says, "Oh, yeah, that's what I'd like." <laughs> yeah. So it, we really. That's part of our coaching is to and training is to uh, explain that to to folks and point out that you know what what the business does for the customer may have very little to do with what you do in the business. Right. Yeah, I will say, uh, so I have a friend, air quotes friend, it's more of an acquaintance, <laughs> but he bought into uh, a restaurant. Yeah. Okay, this has been a couple, you know, several years ago. And his understanding was, hey, I can just hire a guy and he can run it and I can go do whatever, right? So that was his misunderstanding when he got in. Uh, this was a franchise, but um, when he got into it, he thought, all I got to do is sit back and do the books once a month and see how much money I can make. So, would you say that's another sort of misunderstanding? Is there are occasions where you have, obviously, you have to be a leader, you have to run the company, you have to do all those things, 
but there are times where you have to jump in and do the work um, not only uh, to keep the doors open but you also have to provide uh, an influence on your employees to say I got your back and I'm gonna jump in whenever things get rough I'm gonna jump in to start helping out yeah. Did you kind of uh, say that it, you might play both sides of the fence at times? Uh, well, I, I think your your comment is spot on. Uh, in fact, when somebody, the, the red flag to me is when somebody says, I want to invest in a franchise. If you want to invest, talk to Brian and Isaac, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. That's investing. That's yeah. that's investing see how it does and wait for the, the dividend check to, yeah. to come in the mail. Mm -hmm. um, in, in pretty much any business that you get into, and certainly any franchise business, you're going to be playing a role in it, even if it is something that you can do while you keep your day job. There are some opportunities like that, but you're going to be managing people, hiring people. You got to deal with issues when they come up. Oh yeah. And if the thing ran itself, they wouldn't need you. Right. You know? right. So, yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. yeah good but point. and another thing that uh, I want to point out that you had said is that your your friend had a one perception of how that business was going to be ran. Part of our process is to uncover what the actual day-to-day -day mechanics are going to look like before right. you ever invest in that business. You're going to validate what that franchise is like or what that yep. business is like. And it's one of the only ways you can do that, I think, um, objectively validating, okay, what does this business actually do day-to-day? -day? Right. What is my role going to be? Right. Here's what I think it is. What is it actually? And is it something that fits into my business model and my plan? Yeah. Well, he certainly should have come to see you guys before he ever did that. His perception was totally different. In fact, it wasn't down here. Uh, well, in fact, he's, he's had to move on to a corporate job because that didn't work out. Clearly, when you have a totally different concept of what your role is when you get into something like that. And that's for any, that's for any small business, right? I mean, ours is the exact same way. So uh, any small business, just a totally different mindset when you own your own business as opposed to working for somebody. So it's completely, completely different. All right, let's jump into another one. So um, what are what are some of the, so I become a franchisee. You guys mm -hmm. set me up. We do this evaluation. Um, you guys sort of say, hey, this is what your role is going to be. I get paired with a great franchise. Mm -hmm and then I'm off and running, right? What are some of the common mistakes that you guys see franchisees make that may not necessarily, it's great, you can give them all the advice in the world, right? I give my kids great advice, <laughs> and I'll say, clean your room, and then I go downstairs and come back and it's, it's not clean, right? Because they, they hear it, but they may not necessarily always do it. So what are some of the common mistakes? And it could be any franchise, not, not one of your clients, because we know you're, you're all clients don't make mistakes. But uh, just ordinary franchisees or small business owners, it makes no difference, right? What are some of the mistakes that you guys see? You want to go first? Oh, sure. So I think one of the biggest ones is not understanding what your role is going to be before yep. you go into the business. I know we beat that dead horse, but it is so important. Right. Um, What's well, a great reminder for people that are watching, right? It really, it really, really is. Like you have to know what your role is and are you uh, capable of fulfilling that role? Do you have this, do you have the patience for it? Anyone can do anything for a short amount of time, right? right. But mm -hmm. do you have the affinity for it? That's going to be really important. Yep. Um, I think once you jump into a business, um, some of the mistakes I see are, especially if you go into a franchise, part of that investigation process is, can I trust this franchisor? Do I like them? Do okay. they like me? Is this a good partnership? Because they've been down this road before and yep. you're now following that playbook, you have to trust the playbook. Yep. Mm -hmm. Trust what you just bought into. Yep. And if you can't trust what you bought into, then why did you do it in the first place? And I'm assuming you guys vet the best you can the yes. franchisors. We not only do we vet the franchisors, but we also coach our clients on how to vet the franchisor for them. Gotcha. Right? We might think it's great, but I have a different skill set. So yep. how do I coach this client into learning about that franchise to make sure that it fits their skill set, their long-term plan. What do you want this to look like in five or 10 years? Right. Is this what it's gonna get you what you want? Are you looking right. for a, a, a Monday through Friday, nine to five, because you're tired of working nights and weekends? Well, if that's the case, retail's probably not gonna be a good fit for you. Because yeah. um, right. that's right. when you're open. So right. those yeah. are the things that, that I think are some of the mistakes that we try to help steer our clients around. Right. Another mistake that I see franchise owners make and it, it, when, when I describe this, you, you'll say, well, that's silly, why would they do that? Um, when you buy a franchise, more than anything else, you're buying a system for being in a business, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't need that janitorial franchise to start a janitorial business, but they got a system already worked out about how you do the work, how you organize it, sure. how you recruit like people a, to do like the a business cleaning, in a box. Like a business do, yeah. in a box mm -hmm. thing. But uh, 
so often franchisees, right, right from the get-go, they'll want to do it their own way. And I think one of the reasons is, having been in a corporate job, if you're in any kind of professional managerial mm -hmm. job for a business, part of your job description is fix things, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. at, 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 on the, in the broadest sense. So their natural uh, mode of operation is to start fixing things. And with that, with that you, you want to, as, as hard for people transitioning at 35, 45, 50 years old to quit doing that for a while and just follow the franchise lead for a while, <laughs> right? execute on it, okay? You can ask why, but they probably, one, one of the franchises we worked with uh, used to have on their uh, website, don't make the same mistakes we did, okay? <laughs> right. and there's a lot of truth to that. They sure. just worked a lot of the bugs out, <laughs> right. okay? So um, follow, their, follow their lead and uh, in the long run, franchisees often do come up with improvements in the model mm -hmm. over time. But at the beginning, just sit back and hang on and do, do your best to uh, do, do exactly as they teach you to do it. Well, I, I would imagine, especially for maybe some of your clients that are coming from like a corporate job or a corporate you know, environment, they probably feel a little bit stifled creatively. Mm -hmm. And so maybe they want to go out and, and, and feel like they want to implement all these different things or try things their own way. And, and to some degree, you probably don't want to start off doing that. Mm -hmm. um, you just want to stick to, you know, you, you buy the business, you buy the business in the box and, yeah. and you stick with the script. And, and yeah. that's going to take you a long way. Now, as you become more successful, I would imagine you can start to put your your own stand Oh, absolutely. Things. I think one of the biggest examples we use is follow the script for the first year or two, get, get, get good. Get right. Yeah. You just you bought a franchise to skip those couple first years of learning <laughs> trial and error, right? You get right. to fast forward through that. That's what's the greatest thing about it. But then you can still be creative in a franchise. There's, yeah. it's not that depending on the structure. Um, but one of the famous examples is the Big Mac for McDonald's that came out of a franchisee in I think Pittsburgh. Um, oh, yeah. McDonald's okay. corporate didn't come up with that. Someone else came up with that. Said, hey, I think this is a great idea, and now no it's kidding. like their biggest selling thing. So franchising systems have flexibility in them, but. You have to trust the system that you just paid money to be part mm -hmm. of. Right. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, creativity, we do get that from time to time, mm -hmm. and it can be a concern that people express. Um, but there are lots of ways you can be creative in your business that are not creative necessarily around the product. And, and mm -hmm. that, the, the kind of thing that Amanda talked about certainly does happen, but it, usually you get that that then satisfy your, your needs, satisfy there yeah. in some other way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Isaac, you, when you were talking about the person that um, wanted to, to kind of do it their way, um, th there is a certain personalities that they're just so, they got to do it their own way. And I'm, I don't see it real often, but we can usually tell as we start working with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and the, 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 you should just start your own business then because you're, you probably screw up the franchise if you do it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would imagine you're probably fleshing a lot of that out when you're doing yes. the assessments in the first place. Yes. Yeah. If you have, if if it's you, you want to be cutting edge. You want to create everything yourself. You have all these new, you know. There are certain characters that's like not a good fit for a franchise. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. mean you're not a good fit for business ownership. And we can help steer you to the right people that will help with certain ideas like that. Mm. If you're a startup minded person, right. Fulfill that dream. Um, yeah. But yeah, our assessment's really very accurate in that. We can tell pretty quickly, okay, where are you going to fit in on this spectrum? Is this a good fit for you or not? Yeah, that's cool. So real quick, if you're just now tuned in, you're catching us a little late, we're talking to Tom Cremens, right? Is that mm -hmm. right? And Amanda Berry from Friendit. Um, uh, and here's their information. So if you want to, if you want to reach out to them, make sure you uh, you can email uh, Amanda or Tom, either one. There's their phone number. Uh, so just make sure if you if you're out of the court, and right now is probably a decent time exactly. to have a conversation, right? Because we've had uh, a lot of folks that are displaced right now mm -hmm. and are saying, hey, what's the next step in my career or what's next for me? And maybe it's, I want to take a look at a franchise. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it doesn't have to be in the, the food world, as you were saying a minute ago. I'd say a lot of them are probably not in the food world. Yeah. I'm not sure anybody would say, hey, I want to go open up a, a restaurant right now. <laughs> so anyway, there's lots of things to look at. Um, and one of the things that, as we were sort of prepping for the show, uh, we were talking about what are some of the things you guys want to talk about? Mm -hmm. And I brought up 
uh, we talked about some mistakes, you know, hey, what are some mistakes franchisees make? And then I brought up, well, let's talk about some positives. So we're some of the success stories. And you guys said, well, that's what we do. We make sure they don't make mistakes. So uh, just as a, as a kind of another refresher for anybody that kind of popped on here a little bit late, or maybe it's just a refresher, is we can always hear a refresh of what you guys do. So maybe talk about when I said that, you said, well, that's what we do. That's our role. So maybe again, just go into detail on if I'm somebody that's been displaced and I'm considering a franchise, I've never owned a business for myself. I think I'm kind of a business owner, but I'm not real sure, but I'm scared to death to get into a franchise and then you know make all these mistakes that I hear about and read about. Um, and there's a franchise going up and then they're closing. Um, so maybe touch base on the process that you guys walk through, all the things that you all do to make sure that a, that they're vetted properly, and B, they pick the right franchise, and then C, make sure that they avoid some of the common mistakes that we've talked about. Okay. Uh, you guys can take turns, by We can take turns. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the, the front end step in our process is to do our personal franchise assessment profile. It does a personality assessment. You mentioned some of the, like Myers-Briggs and that kind of thing. Right. Ours is actually a proprietary product, was developed for us. Um, so it's not, the output of it is not the same as most of those mm -hmm. that are used in the corporate mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. And it's more to help us understand, you know, what what style and structure of business is the way I like to say it, what, what would fit you. Um, so we do the personality assessment and equally important, because it's not, it's not, unlike the one that you did, Brian, it's not going to say you should be a financial advisor right. or a funeral director. Okay. Right. <laughs> I took one that told me that one. Oh, no, did. <laughs> um, so um, it's, it's more designed to, to give us a starting point. Mm -hmm. But we also sit down with the person and their spouse and uh, partners if they want to have a business partner yep. um, and develop what we call their business model. And that really is the criteria that we end up using. So what are your goals for the business, you know? Certainly financial goals, because you want to sure. make money at it. Sure. But there may be other goals you have, like I want to be able to back away from it for a while. Some businesses let you do that. Well, some don't, aren't, mm -hmm. it's not as likely that you'll be able to do that. Um, are, and what are your, and then what are your transfer <coughs> and skills, okay? Mm -hmm. Franchisors are really not interested in your industry background. Mm -hmm. What they're interested in is that you've got the right skills it takes to run that business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're going to run a, uh, a restaurant, you need to be good at managing a lot of employees and a lot of sure. low-wage employees that um, is probably not going to be their permanent job. So I've run into clients over the years that really have that talent. You know, in fact, in in the narrative part of our questionnaire, they they'll use it at some point to say we ask what you feel like your mm -hmm. strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. are. They'll say. I love developing people. I love coaching people. I remember somebody that said that to me. <laughs> right. That was me. Um, <laughs> uh, so so we we go through that. And what's a realistic and comfortable budget for you and your family? Mm -hmm. uh, you shouldn't bet the farm, okay? And you don't need to bet the farm. By, by the way, that's another misconception that people okay. have. They don't all cost a million dollars. Everything costs yeah, a million it's dollars. Not. It's, <laughs> our clients do far less investment for that. Right. And, and you don't need to invest. Uh, a whole lot of money to necessarily make a lot of money. Yeah. So, so that's the process. And then why don't you finish up with the rest of it? So once we understand your business model and your needs and, and your likes and dislikes, um, we we then do what the matching process, right? So I like to say we're if we're the eHarmony of, of business, we're going to set you up right. for a few dates. <laughs> we're going to see if how it goes. Yeah, speed, um, not speed dating, right? Not speed dating, <laughs> not speed dating. And we never just do one. That's important yeah. as well. We always do at least a panel of franchises. Sure. Most of the time in different industries with different models to make sure that what you think you want is really what you want, right? Um, and, and then we coach you through that process of speaking to the franchises, mm -hmm. getting the very thick government document, the FDD, the Franchise Disclosure Document, it's a legal document every franchisor must fill out, update once a year. What does that mean? What is the information in there? Mm -hmm. How do you use that information to validate what you're hearing? If this franchisor is saying this business, you can walk away from it in two to three years after you get up and running and run it as a semi-absentee opportunity, great. Let's talk to some franchisees that have been in that system. Were you able to do that? Mm -hmm. Is that something that you experienced? How is it to work with the franchisor? Um, 
what are you getting for your royalty payments? Is it mm -hmm. worth it? That's a big, big, big question. Yeah, you have to I would ask. think so, yeah. Um, and we're with them the entire step of the way until they decide that, yes, this is for me, or no, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. And either one of those answers is okay. Um, and and once they sign on the dotted line and they're off, and it's like our, our children leave the house. And, <laughs> and most of the time, because we are local here, um, right. either these our clients then become our, our friends and yeah. we try to be the first customer in their new business. Um, or sometimes they, they I work with a lot of military who move around the country. And yep. So I'll see them every once in a while um, at, during the holidays or something. But um, And then they're off and they're running. And we get to see and watch them grow and hopefully be part of the community. and be successful business owners. And that's the best part, I think, about how our model works. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, that's gotta be, I, I hadn't even really considered it from that angle, mm -hmm. but that's gotta be a pretty cool thing because you're helping businesses in the community and you get to actually, you, you see it happen, right? You get to see the progression of, um, you know, the, going from a startup to, a, you know, <laughs> a yeah. fledgling, um, you know, a fledgling startup to having some real success. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely, one of my favorite, one of my, uh, favorite stories is one of my clients uh, from last year um, was in marketing and ended up uh, his skill set was perfect for a kitchen remodeling company of all things that never considered that before him and his wife just really liked to watch HGTV um, <laughs> turns out that he has a real knack for it um, and my kitchen was the very first one he did so I had told him I said I think this is a great business and I really it's kitchen tune up um, Chase Benson I was like I would really love for you to come do my so he came and did my kitchen which is fantastic um, during this pandemic of course, a lot of people are staying at home now. Uh -huh. A lot of people oh, looking yeah. around going, hmm, if I got to be in this house, let's do some updating. Sure. Um, he's less than a year in and is so successful, he's bought more territory mm -hmm. at this wow. point. And he's part of uh, some of our um, um, networking groups that we do. So it's just so neat to see him and his family just enjoying this new business mm -hmm. and um, being a part of that success and then also being able to enjoy some of the, the products that yeah. he, he now has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. That's so cool. Well, listen, uh, I, I want to wrap up with kind of one uh, one piece. Uh, so we have somebody that's gotten into being a franchisee owner, right? And this really speaks to all small business owners, including including our, our world. So it doesn't you don't necessarily have to be a franchisee to consider this, but it's the one thing I'll bring up that kind of brings the two of us, uh, two of our groups together. And that is when you're a small business owner, um, and we were talking about this right before we produced the show, and that is when you get into a business, you need to decide what your exit plan is as you enter the business, right? right? Yes. And so you guys have lots of conversation. It's, it's, yes, it's about what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. What do you want to do to be happy? How do you, how does this finance, how does this franchise financially benefit your family? But at the same time, you have to consider how do I exit the business at yes. some point? Because that's really where business owners, that's really where, that's the retirement plan in most cases, mm -hmm. right? Is exiting the business and selling that uh, mm -hmm. business off to the next generation as though you guys may have done something very similar. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a couple of words of caution that we run into, I just want to see if you guys, I know that's not because you sort of let them go out and mm -hmm. uh, you don't necessarily follow through, but um, it's important to have that person work with someone like a, like our firm yes. to, uh, to, put a plate, to put a plan in place to make sure you protect your business right from death and disability. That's a huge thing, especially for small businesses, because you don't want to put a ton of money in a franchise or any business, Yeah. drive down the road and all of a sudden, uh, you know, get in an accident and you can't, you, yeah. not, you know, you can't support your family. So you gotta make sure you protect that. But then number two, when you wind up exiting the business, it's not, it's a different world. When you own your business and you receive the income off that business, and then you try to turn around and take that lump sum you sold your business for, and you try to reproduce that income, incredibly uh, difficult to do. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't tell you how many business owners over the almost 20 years I've been doing this that have this great income, and then they go, hey, I'm gonna sell out and I'm gonna continue income. It's like, mm, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Let me show you the numbers. You can still live a comfortable lifestyle, but it doesn't always work out that way. So I say that because um, as a small business owner or a franchisee, I would encourage you to, if you're not already, meet up with a financial professional yes. and have them or help them work or have them help you work through your plan from the day you leave these guys right <laughs> um until the point to when you exit your business and then beyond that so it's important that we all work together which is i thought was kind of a cool connection yeah um, while we guys ask you uh ask you to do the show so you have to have a team you have to have a team around you and I, my grandfather was a small business owner and 
the little area and he always said well, you were the smartest person in the room you're in the wrong room like you, this, this, <laughs> that's not good yeah. um, but you do you have to have a team part of what we do when we talk about here's a great business fit for you it's also how what is this going to look like for you five and ten years down the road and is that going to be comfortable with your life plan and part of that is also bringing in experts lawyers financial planners that type of thing to make sure that you are on the right track yeah. um, don't wait until you need it to start thinking about it rule number one sure you got to you've got to do that beforehand um, you'll be happy that you, you pre-planned yeah for sure I mean I, I, over the years when we've had like I mentioned in the beginning of the show we've had clients that have been separated from corporate America I wish that I would have known something about this because that would have been a great introduction to say I don't know if franchise is the right thing for you but go have a conversation with them yeah. And you guys, I'm assuming, don't charge for somebody to have a conversation. No, actually, right? all oh, of our no, services we, are we get, free. We get, just so you know, we get paid by the franchise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like okay. A, like an executive okay. service company. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, I would just uh, say amen to your comments there because I remember for me personally, um, again, as a corporate refugee, so to speak, <laughs> right. uh, you're used to all, all your retirement stuff being taken care of. I worked for a company that had something that... Uh -huh. you, you guys are too young to have heard of a defined benefit retirement plan. Okay, so, um, <laughs> doesn't exist anymore. Sorry, folks. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, I didn't think about that for a while. I got into the business for a couple of years and was starting to work. And then I thought, well, someday I'll want to retire. And one of the biggest reliefs I had was when I uh, joined up with the guy that's been my financial mm -hmm. advisor for years. And he said, yeah, you can survive. Here's how. We're going to save some money, you right. know. And I sold my business and made some money there too. But, but it's it's all pe a piece of it, and, and you got to. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't see how people would do it on their own. You need you. You're an expert at running your business, not managing right. your investments. Yep. So. Exactly. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, listen. We uh, we certainly appreciate you guys jumping in here and doing this. I know you just had to walk down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just had to drive in, but that's neither here. I mean, it was a lot of trouble, but I appreciate it. I know. <laughs> hey, you guys ready? All right, let's go do this. Uh, but listen, I, I do appreciate uh, you guys uh, coming and doing this. It's just kind of cool. And uh, we're going to continue uh, to meet with small business owners. As a matter of fact, next week we're doing the show with a referral that, uh, that you sent me, Jeff. Oh, uh, which we'll have... introduce him next oh, week. Oh, he's one of our clients. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Jeff, and, uh, Jeff and Andy, both of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, uh, great team. Yeah, well, that's a teaser. So if you uh, <laughs> stay tuned, stay tuned. You have to jump in next week to, uh, to see who we're talking to next week. But anyway, I appreciate it. I'm assuming if you're out there and you're in that space that you don't know whether you want to be a franchisee or whether you're in even if you have a job and you're like i'm burned out don't mm. want to do this anymore you guys see some of that too okay. so you don't have to be displaced to be a franchisee right no. you can uh, or maybe even if you are working you just want to want to find something else to do on the side i don't know who knows you but can make it crazy like amanda and me and quit perfectly good jobs right and jobs because you're just tired of working for the man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Six-figure yeah. job, and I yeah. left it to do this. Yeah, it's been the best decision I've ever made. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we can swap stories about that. <laughs> um, anyway, if you uh, if you are in that case and you want to talk about franchisees or franchisee, is it being a franchisee? Being the franchise. okay, there you go. Yeah. Yep. All right, I don't really know that. We'll teach you the lingo. Too. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, they did teach me that in the prep. <laughs> but anyway, there's their contact information. Uh, make sure you reach out to them. Like I said, it doesn't cost you anything to come and have a meeting with them and say. Is this the right thing for me? Um, and if you've got questions just about anything franchisee, I would, uh, or being a franchisee, sorry, uh, reach out to Amanda and Tom. And again, guys, we appreciate you guys uh, coming to join us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have a good week. The information given herein is taken from sources that IFP Advisors, LLC, doing business as Independent Financial Partners, IFP, IFP Securities, doing business as IFP, and its advisors believe to be reliable, but it is not guaranteed by us as to accuracy or completeness. This is for informational purposes only, and in no event should be construed as an offer to sell or solicitation of an offer to buy any securities or products. Please consult your tax and or legal advisor before implementing any tax and or legal related strategies mentioned in this publication as IFP does not provide tax and or legal advice. Opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not take into account the particular investment objectives, financial situation, or needs of individual investors. This report may not be reproduced, distributed, or published by any person for any purpose without IFP's express prior written consent. Securities offered through IFP Securities, LLC, doing business as Independent Financial Partners, IFP, member of FINRA and SIPC, investment advice offered through IFP Advisors, doing business as IFP, a registered investment advisor. IFP and Family Wealth Planning Partners are not affiliated. The information given herein is taken from sources that IFP 
IFP Advisors, LLC, doing business as IFP, IFP Securities, LLC, doing business as IFP, and its advisors believe to be reliable, but it is not guaranteed by us as to accuracy or completeness. This is for informational purposes only, and in no event should be construed as an offer to sell or solicitation of an offer to buy any securities or products. Please consult your tax and or legal advisor before implementing any tax and or legal related strategies mentioned in this publication as IFP does not provide tax and or legal advice. Opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not take into account the particular investment objectives, financial situation, or needs of individual investors.